Greetings all CHP listeners all over the world. Laszlo Montgomery here with the Season 9 opener. Starring in today's Cheng Yu story is the very same Yue Fei and Xin Hui, who we featured last season in the Cheng Yu, Shu Dao Hu Sun San. Who could forget that one? Well, Xin Hui is back. And today, we give the Chinese saying, Dong Chuang Shi Fa, a once-over. Dong Chuang Shi Fa, what does that literally mean? Dong is east, and Chuang is a window. Shi means matter or affair, thing or business, and fa in this usage means exposed or to get out. East, window, matter, exposed. I'll be truthful with you, not unless you're already quite familiar with the story of the demise of UFA, can you even begin to know what this one might be all about. If by chance you're already well-versed in the Yuan Dynasty work Qian Tang Yi Shi by Liu Yi Qing, this story might be old hat to you. This text, Assorted Matters of Qian Tang, concerned various historical stories from Liu Yi Qing's part of Hangzhou, known as Qian Tang, named after the Great River, of course. His stories concern various affairs that went down during the Southern Song, when Hangzhou was where the capital was located. As you recall, the Song Dynasty was delivered a walloping knockout punch by the Jurchens and their Jin Dynasty, and one of the royals, Zhao Go, escaped and went on to reestablish the dynasty on the other side of the Yangtze River in Hangzhou, and he reigned as Song Emperor Gao Zong. His father, of course, was Emperor Hui Zong. And despite all that had happened, Yue Fei fought on against the Jurchens and wouldn't give up until he pushed them back north into their lands. Qin Hui, who served as chancellor, had spent some time as a captive of the Jurchens once, and was eager to appease them and get them to tone down their aggression against the reconstituted Song dynasty. Yue Fei was immensely popular with the people and was regarded as a hero for taking the fight to China's Jurchen tormentors. But Xin Hui wished to get rid of Yue Fei, who had become a stone in his boot for too long now. One night, Qin Hui whispered quietly with his wife, Lady Wang, in a private room in their house. They stood next to a window that faced east, and there was no one present to overhear their conspiratorial exchange of words. But Qin Hui and his wife, since the matter was top secret and of utmost importance, made sure they were alone. Yue Fei was extremely popular with the people, and if there was the slightest suspicion of foul play, Qin Hui would suffer dire political consequences. Despite his misgivings, Lady Wang urged her husband Qin Hui to get rid of Yue Fei once and for all. She had said to him, Zhuo Hu rong yi, fang hu jiu nan le. It's easier to catch a tiger than to deal with him once he has escaped. Qin Hui saw that his wife's advice was convincing enough, and so he decided to act quickly to kill Yue Fei. But to execute such a popular figure, he needed criminal charges that were absolutely ironclad, preferably from an insider in Yue Fei's own camp. Lady Wang said, I know there's a general in Yue Fei's army, Wang Gui, who turned and ran during a battle, and who Yue Fei had whipped as punishment. Surely to seek revenge against Yue Fei, Wang Gui will be happy to provide the evidence we need. The next day, Qin Hui had Wang Gui arrested and brought to him. When Wang Gui proved unwilling to betray Yue Fei, Qin Hui had him tortured and beaten until he finally gave him the confession he was looking for. Based on these Flimsy and trumped-up charges, Qin Hui thereupon had Yue Fei arrested, and soon after, on January 28, 1142, had him executed for treason. Not long after, Qin Hui was enjoying a little pleasure cruise upon the beautiful West Lake in Hangzhou, when he suddenly started feeling feverish and unwell. And in the midst of his fever, suddenly appearing before his eyes— was the ghost of an unkempt man with long hair hanging loose and wild all over his face, standing in the middle of a boat. 
Qin Hui recoiled in utter terror when suddenly this man pointed an accusing finger at him and cried out in a thunderous voice, You have destroyed the nation and failed the people. I have told heaven what you plotted, and soon you will have to answer for your crimes against heaven. And after saying this, as quickly as he had appeared, the man vanished into thin air. Qin Hui died soon after this in 1155, and on the heels of his passing, his son, Qin Xi, died as well. Lady Wang, distraught and grieving at the double loss of her husband and son, contacted a Taoist priest who supposedly had the ability to communicate with spirits in the afterlife. And prior to the meeting with Lady Wang, the priest carried out all the requisite sacrifices and rituals, and then he began the ceremony, and soon began his communion with Lady Wang's husband, the former Chancellor Qin Hui. As soon as he accessed the afterlife, the priest saw Qin Hui's son, Qin Xi, weighed down with chains and manacles, and he asked Qin Xi, Where is your father? And Qin Xi said, You will find him in the capital city of the underworld. The priest left Qin Hui's son to his torture and agony and journeyed to the capital of the underworld. Upon his arrival, he saw Qin Hui, who was even more chained and manacled than his son, and he was being tortured and manhandled by a group of devils as his eternal punishment. Qin Hui espied the spirit of the Taoist priest, and his eyes locked on the priest, and Qin Hui pleaded with him, I beg you to tell my wife, Dong Chuang Shi Fa, the plot at the east window has been discovered after all. Dong Chuang Shi Fa, that matter they privately and surreptitiously discussed next to the east window where they thought they'd be alone in their residence, had gotten out. Whenever you wish to describe a nefarious plot or scheme that comes to light despite every attempt made to keep it a secret, you can say those four syllables. Dong Chuang Shi Fa, as Benjamin Franklin once said, three can keep a secret if two of them are dead. The truth always finds a way of percolating to the surface. Those with guilty consciences will be tormented by their evil deed, and they will out themselves eventually. Emma reminded me how this story kind of has a little bit of a Macbeth vibe. Qin Hui is the Macbeth figure, and the Lady Macbeth figure is his wife, Lady Wang, who, despite trying to cover up their crimes, are both punished by their own guilty consciences. There's even the Taoist priest that somewhat parallels the witches in Macbeth. So, there you have it. Dong Chuang Shi Fa. Season 9 is now officially off and running. Nine more beauties coming your way over the next 18 weeks. We're deep into contract negotiations with Emma's team of lawyers about another bonus episode. So, we'll see how that goes. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. This is Laszlo Montgomery signing off, as usual, from Los Angeles in the state of confusion. Please find it in your heart to join me again next time for another exciting episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast.